Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to do right now a follow-up video on all this controversy over military. And I guess I'm going to have to straighten something out once and for all. I do not believe in false valor. And I think that is the point I was always trying to make. I've seen enough videos on the internet where a lot of people were approached by military people of somebody who was claiming to have served in the armed services of America. People that were claiming they were in the military when they actually weren't. And the ones that actually were in the military were overplaying the role that they played in the military. And that pisses a lot of military, no matter what branch of the service that you're in. And I could understand that completely, especially when they actually fought or were in the military services. It doesn't matter what division of the military services. I could understand these guys being pissed off at somebody who's pretending and with all this false valor, man, I could really understand that kind of shit. That's my point. It really has to do with false valor. You know, we have a YouTuber out there that actually was in the service. And as a result of that, there was a, a pretty serious injury. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. We had the microphone off on here. We're doing a second show here because I wanted to uh, kind of back up what I said on my last video. And uh, I am not against the military whatsoever. As I emphasized in my last video, uh, throughout my family line, people have been in some form of military or locally, they've been police, detectives, things like that. So that's a lot in my family. There's a big line in my family. Even my dad was in the Navy. He didn't serve in any function as far as uh, being in the field. But he lucked out because uh, one of the uh, landing vessels that he would have been on with his troops, they all got killed. Okay. He wasn't on that. If he was actually part of that, he had, he had gotten out, I think, on a medical situation. I don't recall what the hell it was at the time. He would have been dead. Okay, the whole platoon, actually, in the Navy, that was doing a marine landing. Uh, they all got shit. They all got killed. And lucky for my dad that he wasn't on there. Timing, situation, whatever. But he lucked out on that. But he was in the Navy, as well as other people in my family. I even watch cotillions, war or military related movies on TV all the time. I have nothing against military. You need some kind of strong force, no matter what country you live in to defend the country in case there is going to be an imminent battle of some sort. You need protection. Everybody's got nuclear these days. Russia probably has some of the biggest nuclear uh, uh, armament of all the countries in the world. More likely it's Russia, well over what the United States has. Uh, I don't simply believe in war unless Somebody's actually attacking your country and you have to defend yourself. I have nothing against people being in the military or serving, no matter what branch you're in. Everybody serves a purpose, and that goes down to clerical workers, dishwashers, janitorial, military police, whatever it might be. I'm not against those people. I'm only against people who push their false valor and say that they've done things in the military that they haven't done. So my words get misconstrued quite a bit. That's normal, Ronnie. Okay. Uh, how come you didn't do, you didn't to mandatory service as a uh, mandatory service? No, I didn't enlist for anything. And quite frankly, I would not enlist. That is not my endeavor. It was never my endeavor to be in the military. That's just my thing. Everybody has their own values. Everybody has their own values. But mine is not respected. Everybody wants me to think their way and have their beliefs. But what about mine? Mine needs to be respected too. Again, I have nothing against the military. It's just not my thing. I believe that any kind of friction with another country can be resolved in other ways. Now, I would understand if your country comes under attack, you've got to defend yourself. Absolutely. There's no question about that. I would never question that. Now, here's the thing. Our armed services fight for freedom. They fight for freedom of speech. 
They fight so that we could have the lives that we want. But why is it that many people in the military, at least the ones that are attacking me, are saying that I have no right to my own freedom of thought, freedom of speech? Isn't that what they're fighting for? But yet, on the you know on the contra you know, controversy here, they're saying that you have no right to have your beliefs. Now, what's wrong with that picture? For example, I was born Catholic. Well, you know, I had to do all that stuff, catechism, commun communion, etc., confirmation. But I chose not to go in a religious belief direction as an adult. That was my right, okay, because I don't believe in organized religion. Okay, I have that right, okay, and I don't have a right to be attacked by those religious groups that say that hey, you know, you're. Not one of us, and you have to be one of us. You have to believe in a god. You have to believe in something bigger than yourself. Okay, I believe in myself. That's who I believe in. I'm not a person who adheres to violence as being a、uh, solution to any problem. If that was the case,、uh, you know, <laughs> there would be some people that would be be in big trouble. Okay, I don't believe in violence. I always feel that there's always a way, if you can, if you can, if you can, to negotiate to better terms than war or、uh, acts of violence. Whether it's military, whether it's civilians, it don't matter. It's the same thing. It's not my thing. Everybody expects that to be an American, you got to be rah rah rah, pro war, you know, pro violence. That's just not who I am. That's just not who I am.、Okay. Make love, not war. I love big hooters. There you go. Love for something. No, I don't believe in God. No, I'm not religious. These veterans will be judged in next world. Well, I'm not sure what that means. Judged for what? Look, veterans, they didn't do anything bad. People enlisted for many reasons. Some needed a job. Some wanted to go into a career that the military promised that they would pay for. A lot of them were disappointed, but one wanted to go into engineering, and it just didn't happen. I've heard all these stories before. There's a lot of people who were penniless and broke that joined the military, quite frankly, because they had nothing else going on. They wanted some kind of employment, or they wanted to belong to something that was bigger than they were. They wanted to fulfill their life. Some of them had military careers. Some of them really respected the military. They didn't just join for these other reasons. That well, you know, I'm not doing anything with my life. Let me enlist in the military. Although many have done that, and you know that is a fact. Many have done that. So again, nothing against the military per se. I'm just not into violence. The people you fight in the military have families just like you. But their government told them the same thing. You got to fight and kill, and our government said the same thing. You have to fight and kill other people. Okay? There's a lot of veterans that had a lot of remorse. Look, I know a guy very personally, and he was a colonel. I used to see him at the、uh, SWAT meet on the weekends in Hawaii. He wrote a book, two books actually, and a lot of the work he did was recon. And my brother has a copy of the book. I don't. Have, I gave it to my brother. I don't have a copy of the book. I would read excerpts from this. And this guy was in the Vietnam War. Okay, he was a returning.、Uh, I don't know how many missions he's done, but、uh, he was in there quite a while. He became full fledged colonel. He's seen blood and gore. Okay, he told me how other military men felt in that war.、He、told me how he felt in that war. Some of the things were kind of frightening that he actually talked about. Okay. It got to a point that some of these guys were holding Vietnamese heads in their hands that were freshly cut, as the enemy also did and proudly displayed. I mean, horrible shit.、It、became to the point that he became desensitized to blood, and a lot of the people that were fighting at that time, they were shooting at just about anything that moved. They wanted to come home. Bottom line, they wanted to come home to see their families. They got so spooked, and I'm quoting. From this guy's book, he talks about everything from women that he met in Vietnam. He talked about the Viet Cong. It was a very good book. I'd like to get a copy of that and even read these excerpts. That would be excellent show material on my show if I can get a hold of his book again. 
I forgot even the title of it. My brother has a copy of the book that I bought off him at the swap meet, and、uh, this guy was really gung ho with the military. Okay,、um, and he served and served over and over again voluntarily. But he also talked about the perils of war. He talked about how his other、uh, mates in Vietnam who served what they thought about that particular war, and not one of them really believed in what they were fighting for. Some of them regretted they ever signed. Some of them were enlisted, and some of them were drafted. And what he talked about in his book was that the majority of them had regretted ever being in that particular skirmish. Too many were dying, and still they were trying to find reason and rhyme why we're here. That's a terrible position to be in. Now, as I also said on my last show, if you are being attacked, you got to protect yourself. You got to get a bayonet or a bullet to protect yourself when somebody's coming with you as such. You have a family, you have children, perhaps. You got to fight back. Sometimes that means killing somebody. I understand under those circumstances, it's either you or him. Completely understanding of that. But a lot of people, as this colonel that he talked about in his book, they got to a point where they did get really fucked up. That's where the PTSD comes in, and it's real. And it's real with a lot of people who served. They see things that they've never seen before and don't ever want to see again. Okay, pretending it's Hollywood. Who's pretending it's Hollywood? I don't know what you mean by that. I know, not from being there, but I know from somebody who actually spent a lot of time in the military, has seen action, and came back with PTSD, genuine PTSD. It was a traumatic experience, but he signed up again and again and again, which I never understood. But nevertheless, he did. He became a colonel. I knew him and his wife very well. She was a local Hawaiian lady, and the excerpts in his book were were frightening and educational and perplexing at sometimes of what he wrote about in there. A lot of details that we never hear about what actually happened in Vietnam War. It was gruesome. One of the things that they would do if they seen a Vietnam child approaching, they would check the child's hands. To see if they were calloused or not.、And、what they mean by that is most of these children worked in the field, farming, and rice. And these kids worked a hard life as a young child because they'd be out in the field with their parents, farming. They assumed that the kid was carrying a bomb. Unfortunately, many children were killed, thinking that maybe. And they've done this too. In my understanding, they've done this too. They've used children. To kill other people, they put bombs on that would go off once they approached Americans and allies in the field, and many were killed in situations like that. So one of the ways they did, as he put in his book, and I'm quoting from his book, they would look at the hands of these children, and that would give them a clue or a hint that they weren't children of farmers, that they were being used by that military and for the purpose of killing Americans and its allies, wearing a bomb. Underneath the clothing, they had to check this, and many times they were right. So, I mean, this is not even a subject I even like to talk about, to be honest with you. The bottom line of all this, I'm not pro-military, but I, I don't agree with a lot of、uh, changes that have happened in America today. How America has gone downhill, and how masses of people are leaving America because they don't like the politics or something about America. It's something that's growing. I mean, look, I'm out here. You're out here. If you're in the Philippines, you had a reason besides just a woman to move out here. You needed a change. I needed a change. But I don't appreciate when people will say that I'm knocking the military. Not at all. As they said, a lot of people in my family line were in military. I didn't disrespect them. You know, they made their own decisions whether they wanted to enlist. Or they didn't fight the draft and went in. I wouldn't have went in. Bottom line, I was not going to give up my life for something I didn't believe in, or a war that we should, or skirmish, because you know people call it a war. It wasn't really a war that we had should have had no involvement in to begin with. I didn't believe in that. I'm just a person that don't like people who's claiming false valor, saying they did this and did that and they seen action. Man, I I ran into a lot of people like that. They were bullshit artists. That's all I'm saying. Be proud of whatever you did in the military. Whether you were clerical, whether you were washing dishes, or whatever you did, or you swabbed the decks of a ship, I'm not saying you shouldn't be proud of whatever job you did. Never said that at all. I'm just saying for the ones that never seen action and were claiming that they seen action, 
which we note as false valor. So I just wanted to clear this up, but apparently it's not cleared up. I don't believe and support people who are trying to exhibit false valor. I think that's wrong. It's wrong because there are people who have actually served in the military and have been in the field and have seen action and even have gotten injured as a result of that. So when somebody goes around with all this false valor, I could understand how military people would get pretty pissed off and they have the right to. That's where I'm coming from. That's it. Okay. Uh, read the previous message. Thanks for serving your country. Yeah, right. Well, I guess you don't like serving the country. There's nothing wrong with serving your country. That's the country you were born in. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I have nothing against that. And I'm being, excuse me, frank with you. I have nothing against that at all, okay? It's just that I don't believe in uh, fighting wars, for example, that we had no reason and rhyme to be. And people having to get killed for that. Because the government has a gripe with another country over something that possibly could have been settled otherwise rather than sending troops out there and getting people killed and killing other people. Okay. The only Popeye, the only action Popeye seen was in the, the brothels of Subic Bay. Well, you may be right on that. Okay. You know, look, people want to feel honor for the country. They feel that if they, they were in the military, it doesn't matter what branch they are. They're proud of the fact that they were part of a bigger group, okay, of something greater than themselves. There's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, we got people here on YouTube that adhere with all the trolls because they want to be part of what they think is something bigger than they are. They want to hear the gossip and the, the drama and they want to join in to be accepted. Some people want to be accepted. There's a lot of reasons why people went in the military. They were either enlist, they either enlisted or they were drafted during these times, okay? Or they were looking for employment. And with the promise that the military would teach them different careers that they could take into their civilian life. That was the, uh, uh, the pretext of people wanting to be in the military to progress their lives in the future with some kind of job skills, which was nothing wrong with that. Unfortunately, uh, as many have told me, that they tried to sign, they signed up for a reason to get a particular career direction and they, they didn't come through for them. I've heard this more than one time. I've heard this many times. So without making a big story about this and a big ado about it, I'll answer your question. No, I'm not uh, against the military. Uh, as I said, I've had a lot of family members in the military, including my father. Uh, it's just not my gig. Okay, it's not my gig. Okay, if it was, I would have enlisted or something and joined the service. That was just not my endeavor. It was an endeavor for many out there, but it just wasn't my endeavor. And sure as hell, I'm going to fire my gun. If somebody's fucking firing on me, you got that damn straight. You got that damn straight. Fight or flight syndrome. You can run away from it if you could face it. That's what life is all about. You need to protect yourself in a situation where you're being fired on. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Let them shoot you? They're thinking the same thing. You're going to fire away. You got a loved one at home. You may have a family. You got to protect yourself so you can return home. That's all they wanted to do. They wanted to return home to their families. Unfortunately, for people in the Vietnam War, they didn't get all the hoop, the whole hoorah that other veterans had in other wars. There was no parades for them. In fact, people turned their nose at them because a lot of Americans then and still do now believe that we should not have been in this skirmish with Vietnam. And even those who have served in Vietnam, I'm sure they would agree with me on this, saying, look, I was in there, I did my job. I didn't believe we should have been there, but I was sure as hell going to protect my, my funky little ass. That's for damn sure. I love America. Okay. Uh, I'm all for the defense of America, my country that I was born in. But a lot of people did not believe in settling problems between two countries with violence. I happen to be one of those people that feel... Now, if there was an alien invasion from people from outer space, okay, that were here for the specific reason of annihilating our species, give me the next gun. I'll be in line, you know. I'd fight against that shit. You know, annihilation. World annihilation. We're all going to fight for that. It wasn't always the case with all these wars and skirmishes. It was always the case. We were fighting over 
different issues than worried about really world an uh, annihilation. Okay, everybody had their uh, acquisition of uh, natural resources, oil, territorial uh, needs, and uh, there's always a reason. Political. A lot of it is always political. America wants to be the top dog. So does every other country. To have the best military power to defend themselves. I understand that. But one day, somebody's going to hit the button. It's going to annihilate all of us. And maybe that's the answer. I don't know. Let the animals live and let the people just fade away. Let the earth start fresh and anew. I just don't believe in violence. And what the fuck is wrong with that? Respect my opinion. If you want me to respect yours and your values and morals, it's only fair to respect mine. It can't be a one-way street. That Frank, you either believe in the military and killing and all that other shit, or you know you don't. You have my way to fucking highway, Frank. I don't, I don't, I don't go that way. I don't like people telling me my way to highway. You either got to be religious or you believe in killing people in war. But I always felt that, if possible, if possible, negotiations. Are the way to do it to avoid、uh, the killing of so many innocent lives that have families and children that have their own endeavors after the war that they were never able to do or see again. Some people become crippled and, and can't work. Okay,、uh, they've lost limbs because they believed in the country and they believed what they do and was right. How they felt afterwards, I can't go into everybody's psyche. And figure how they felt afterwards if they felt it was worth going there. Yeah. So understand something: we all have our own opinions, and you don't have to agree with anyone, but respect somebody's opinion. That's all I'm saying. Give people a little bit of leeway. Give people a little bit of slack. You want me to believe everything you believe in? That that just can't happen. And you can't force me to believe that military is the answer. That fighting and killing is the answer. If that was the case, there'd be some people in big ass trouble from me. I don't go that direction, man. I just don't go there. If you're happy that you're in the military, I will respect that. If you feel that killing is the answer to achieve whatever it is you're out to achieve for the government, by the government, I respect your opinion. Just, just respect mine. That's all I ask. Protecting your country is one thing, but fighting an unjust war is simply wrong. But that's how I feel exactly, Norm. I feel that way. Fozzie has been abducted by aliens several times. <laughs> he may have. Maybe he's right. Who knows?、Uh, don't forget, Frank. Wars are a money. Okay, yeah, I didn't handle that part, Mika, but I was going to come to that. But thank you for reminding me. War、uh, is very productive for the economy. Okay, very productive. When the economy is slacking, the United States government comes up with a reason to fight with somebody. True, true. It may take a couple of weeks to get that on,、uh, William O'Leary. Listen, I got the balls to say on here my beliefs, but you, those of you that are veterans, they want me to adhere to their beliefs, but they don't want to respect mine. I would be a conscientious objector, is what I would be. Okay, my conscience says no. That it's not right for me. It might be right for others in the military that don't mind going out in the fields and being GI Joe. That's just not me. It's not me. Why can't they respect that? I respect what they do. I. It's not my endeavor. I don't believe in being government property. I think the government's got enough control on us already in our lives. But to become government issued, man, that's just not me. Maybe it's for you, and I respect that. I'm gonna say it again. I respect your beliefs and thoughts about military and serving in the military. I'll even respect the people who have fought in the military. Okay, I'll even respect them. Okay, some come back injured or dead or maimed. I respect their conviction. I respect their dedication to America. Absolutely, America is my country. It may have faltered a bit, and I decided that America is not the place for me, but. Then again, I never got involved in American politics. Never will. That's not my endeavor. I don't like to talk about politics. I mean, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> so, the question I have to my viewers, I got one more sneeze coming. <coughs> Damn. The question I have to my viewers: Am I entitled to my own beliefs? Should somebody's other person's belief be forced upon me? That it's their way or the high? Why can't I have my own beliefs, and why can it not be respected? That's the question. 
why does it have to be a one-way street? Well, frankly, you know, if you don't believe in the military and you didn't enlist and blah, 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 then, you know, you're not one of us, man, you know. You're not one of us. You don't respect your country, man. No, I, I did respect my country for a long time. I don't respect my country anymore. Never did. For a long time. Politics have become out of hand. You know, and it, it's just become a, a fucking animal war match uh, between political parties. They're supposed to be all standing together. Why should it be a Republican party? Why should it be a, a Democratic party? We're all fighting with supposedly for the same thing. But they're at each other like dogs at each other's throats. Instead of coming together, they become further apart. But they're all working for the good of the government. And you would think that these parties would just become one party. The party for the people, which is good for the people. Not to have conflicting parties. You got your liberals, you got your independents, you know, you got your, you got your Republicans, you got your Democrats. You know, grassroots people. If they all just came together as one party, maybe there wouldn't be so much friction in America. But they divide themselves between two different or more parties, which I've always felt was wrong. That's as far as I'm going to go with politics. That's as far as I'm going to go with politics. I'm not into politics. And bottom line is, you're not going to change my fucking mind. I don't believe in fucking war, okay? I'm not a military type of person. I would never enlist. I would never enlist. I would become a conscientious objector if they were going to draft me. That's the bottom line. That is my choice. It is my belief. Respect my belief. If you expect me to respect yours, that's the bottom line. Don't make me Mr. Bad because I don't have your beliefs. But the one thing I do support with the military is those people that did serve and have to be confronted with people with false valor. I could certainly understand them getting pissed off at that. But don't get pissed off at me. I don't believe in false valor. I'm against that myself. It's wrong for those who have served. And then to have some goober out there saying, I did this and that, and try to relate to people. I've seen so much action. I've seen so much action, but they never saw any action other than their pencil on a desk. Again, not to demean, and they take everything out of context with me, not to demean jobs that weren't in the field were not important for the military. You need administrative people. You need people who were doing janitorial, swabbing decks, or whatever they were. Okay, ammunition distribution, weapon distribution, whatever the, whatever the endeavor was. They all played their own part. Don't get me wrong, okay? Every corporation has the top dogs, and you got the people at the lower end of the scale, are which the people that actually make that company strong. It's not always the executives. It's the, it's the bee workers. It's the, it's the worker bees that make the company. It's the blue-collar workers in America that build the country, that have made the country by the labor the hard labor they do, okay? I'm a believer in that. I've been a labor the best part of my life. I've been pretty much blue collar. It's people like myself and others that have taken on all kinds of different jobs that served a function, okay? Served a function. You, the executives wouldn't be living in fancy fucking skyscrapers and whatnot if it wasn't for laborers who built it. A lot of times, blue-collar workers are looked down on by the white-collar workers. Laborers built the world. They built America, they built the world. The immigrants that came into America built America. They built America. They were willing to get their hands dirty when some would not. I think you get where I'm coming from at this point. Let's see. My and other American cit cities full of ex-servicemen with mental issues, left to live on the streets. And that's another thing, too. They want you to serve. But when you develop mental illness through, whether it's PTSD or whatever it is, they're not taking care. See, I'm pro. I'm not against. I'm pro-veterans. And this guy just made a statement right here that's so freaking true. The military wants you to go out there, serve the country. But when you did serve the country, what are they doing for you? Ask a lot of military veterans about that and see what they say. Are they getting all the benefits they really want? Are they getting all the psychological and, and otherwise help that they're getting? You're going to probably have an answer of no. Yes, you're absolutely right. There are military people who have actually served the country, even seen action, that are on the streets getting no help from the government at all. 
not getting enough mental health help. That's sad. Thanks for bringing that up, uh, Norman Wonder. You're, you're right on. You're hitting the nail on the head. What about these veterans on the street? What does the government do it for them? Okay, now you understand where I'm coming from, where I'm not pro-government when it comes to military. Okay, you're expendable to the United States. You're expendable. Your life is lost. They give the family a flag, salute you. You get the family might get your pension, whatever. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to serve your country. Absolutely not. Don't put words in my mouth. I would appreciate that. And Eric don't know shit, and he's misconstruing everything I have said ever. In regards to the military, I've had a lot of family, as I said, in the military. I don't disrespect people in the military, and I never will. It's just not my gig. You follow me? It's not my gig. Respect that, okay? Chances are, I would have went to Canada or somewhere if I was going to be drafted. I didn't believe in the war efforts at that time, which happened to be the Vietnam skirmish. I'll call it. I didn't believe in it. So did millions of other Americans did not believe in it either. So go, you know, blast all the millions of other Americans besides me that didn't believe in the war efforts. Go blast them. There's millions. Of them. I'm gonna call them cowards too. There are probably more people that didn't believe in the war than the ones that actually signed up or got enlisted or drafted. What about their opinions? Not just mine. What about their opinions? You don't respect them. And you want us to respect your values and morals and all that stuff? That's bullshit. I'll tell you, straight face. This is bullshit. War is not the answer to everything, unless it becomes the answer and it gets to that point where you have to fight, where the country has to put together all the troops that they can, all the weaponry, because there's an imminent danger to the country. Whether it's going to be an imminent missile attack, nuclear attack, fuck yeah, you got to react on that. Fuck yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. But that train of thought has never gotten America anywhere, has? You go and count how many millions of people have fought and allies that have fought in wars and skirmishes. It's a phenomenal number, and I don't know the number. How many people got killed, and how many people? Were crippled for the rest of their life for believing in something that they thought was great, that they thought was great, and they thought the country was going to take care of them after the skirmishes, and they became crippled, wheelchair bound. Where is your government when they had the need for mental health issues that they never truly addressed in the way they should have? You can't disagree with me with that. Nobody, and I mean nobody, could disagree with that. Okay, that's all I have to say. I think I made my point in spades. To sum it up, no, I'm not against the military. Okay, I'm just against people who get involved with this false valor shit. Okay, people pretending that they were in the service when they were in the service, or people that were in the service and did not see action and pretends that they did. I can certainly understand other military people. Being very adverse to those kind of people, and I wasn't even in the military, and I'm adverse to people claiming all this false valor shit. Don't matter what you did, be proud of what you did is what I'm saying. You know, I listen to some YouTubers out there, and they they act like they saw action when they didn't see any action at all. The only action was pushing a mop. That's what I have a problem. Be proud of what you did. Be proud of what you did, but don't with this false valor shit. Some actually did serve and came back injured. Think about those people who actually did serve. Am I making myself perfectly clear? I hope I am. That's all I have to say on the issue of fucking military, personal beliefs, and all that crap. My beliefs are mine; they're not yours. Your beliefs are yours, and they're not mine. Respect my opinion. It's not a one-way street. That's not fair. That's not fair at all.